Thank you for listening to KSO Today, your free daily podcast from K-State Online. We'll talk Kansas State football, basketball, recruiting, and everything going on at KSO, your Rivals.com home for Kansas State athletics. This podcast will move rather quickly, so let's not waste any more time in kicking off another installment of KSO Today. It is January 21st, 2020, and it's not difficult to come up with content for this edition of KSO Today, with Kansas State heading to Lawrence tonight to take on the Kansas Jayhawks. I'll spend almost all of my time talking about tonight's Sunflower Showdown in Outfield House, but it's another L-Town in Kansas, Leonardville, I need to speak about here real quickly. Why? As you may have suspected, Leonardville is the home to one of the 10 branches of People's State Bank located throughout the state of Kansas, and PSB is the sponsor of all editions of the KSO Show, including this edition of KSO Today. That said, let's move on to focusing on the Wildcats and the Jayhawks. I will talk through the game. The stats provided to us by KSU underscore fan, that is at KSU underscore fan on Twitter. If you're not following him, it's certainly worth doing so. All the numbers I'll be talking about today mostly come from the preview and prediction piece that he does the vast, vast majority of the work for. Uh, Going to be an interesting night tonight in Lawrence. Uh, if nothing else, staff-wise, we're sending Flanders and Logan tonight. Usually we get two uh, allowed to us in Outfield House. We decided to send those two. Derek and I will not be there. We'll be covering each from home. You'll see all the regular coverage from myself, Derek, Fan, Nelson, as well as you know the videos and photos from Flando and Logan. Um, we have to have those guys there physically, physically to do that part. So we decided to send them. I know they're really going to enjoy it and hopefully bring us some fun information and video from that game. So again, K-State KU tonight, uh, obviously in the Big 12, a big game for both teams in the sense that Kansas is looking to continue, continue to control the league right now, or at least keep pace with Baylor near the top of the league is a better way to put it. K-State looking for its second straight Big 12 win after starting 0-4. For the second straight game, K-State's playing the best team that's played all season long. Also for the second straight game, as Fan notes in the preview and prediction, K-State's basically playing the number one defensive team, at least efficiency-wise, in the country. West Virginia was last Saturday. K-State's performance against them knocked them down a peg or two. Kansas goes up to number one there. So, glass half full. Me says the last time K-State played the number one defensive efficiency team in the country and the best team they faced all year. They beat them when they hammered West Virginia, who was number 12 at the time, number four in Ken Palm at the time, 84 to 68 Saturday in Manhattan, Kansas number one in Ken Palm now on the road, an even bigger challenge certainly than West Virginia was at home last Saturday for K-State. As you look through the advanced metrics provided again by at KSU underscore fan, within preview and prediction, which is free at KSTIN online. So if you're not a subscriber and you see that story, you can click it and still read all of this information I'm sharing with you. The only real area where K-State has any sort of advantage over Kansas in this game, and it's a pretty significant advantage to be fair, is, is turnovers. Um, so K-State's defense forces turnovers about 25% of the time, around 25% of possessions. That's good for ninth in the country, yet if you know well over 300 teams in college basketball. Kansas turns it over uh, just under 20% of its possessions, 19.8. That's not a terrible number, but it's not a good number either. It ranks 218th in the country. So in layman's terms, K-State is great at forcing turnovers on defense, and KU is pretty bad at taking care of the ball on offense. They're very good at everything else. Again, I am cherry-picking the one stat where K-State has a significant advantage. I could turn around and do this in Kansas's favor virtually everywhere else. So this is not to mislead you or make you think K-State has a particularly great matchup tonight in Lawrence, because I do not think they do. But if you're looking for a path to victory, that's where it would be, is where Kansas does turn the ball over quite a bit, and K-State is good at forcing turnovers. When you look at the keys to winning this game, again, straight from fan here, uh, in preview and prediction, he mentions dominating that strength, which of course is turning the ball over, meaning turning the ball over when Kansas has it. K-State, though, can't turn around and turn over a bunch itself. The K-State offense has gotten bad at this too lately. As he notes, it's down into the 300s, 306 at turning the ball over. So K-State doesn't need just to turn KU over a lot. They can't give it right back over by turning it over themselves. He notes, and I think he's right, it'll be very key to match Kansas from behind the arc. This is a good shooting Kansas team. Uh, maybe not elite, you know. Uh, Devin Dotson, for example, handles the ball a lot. Is not a great shooter around 30-31%. But they do have shooters in Moss, Abaji, Braun, etc. This team can shoot the ball, um, especially at home. It can get hot. So if K-State's going to win the game, it needs to turn KU over a lot. It needs to match KU from behind the arc, and according to KSU fan, 
and then win something else. I know that's a generic point, but I think it's the right point to make. It's not going to be just enough probably to shoot the ball as well as KU and turn them over a lot. You have to find something else you're good at too. Do you shoot really, really well at the foul line? Do you avoid fouling Kansas somehow? Do you compete better on the boards than you'd expect with that KU front line with McCormick and Azabuki and DeSosa coming off the bench? Which one of those things that on paper doesn't look like it's likely to happen can you make happen? Because two win tonight in Lawrence, a place that's very, very tough to win for anybody, not just K-State, and particularly a K-State team that's not very good so far this year, something like that's going to have to happen. I know that's probably a lot of critical talk about the game. I think K-State can be competitive. My ultimate prediction I wrote in the story, I like KU to win 71-59. to uh, I think K-State really impressed me on Saturday, and the Wildcats certainly showed on Saturday and by coming back from 15 down to take a lead on Texas Tech two games ago that this team hasn't given up. They're going to continue to play hard for this coaching staff and haven't give, given up on the season. That said, best team they've played all year on the road. The last couple, well, the last Big 12 road trip to Texas didn't go so well. This is a much, much tougher matchup. I don't see K State being in this game in the last four minutes. Maybe not even in the last eight. We'll see. But I like Kansas by 12 or more tonight in this one. Let's take a second to look around the rest of the site, what you're going to see outside of hoops coverage. There really is recruiting news galore on the site right now. Derek has written updates in the last 24 hours on 2021 prospects. Wide receiver Brody Brecht and running back Jaden Williams. Both have been offered both out of the state of Iowa. Again, those are two class of 2021 prospects. Flando, late yesterday afternoon, perhaps, really is my fault for editing it more slowly than he wrote it, um, had a really nice update and conversation with four-star class of 2020 wing Donovan Williams, who was in attendance uh, in Manhattan last Saturday to watch K-State put it on West Virginia Flanders will teach you in there without giving up too much. It looks like it's really K-State and Texas right now are the two strongest competitors for Donovan Williams, former Nebraska commit who kind of reopened his commitment and is going to be looking probably at a number of Big 12 schools for his destination. Coming up in the future, I do see a recruiting notebook in the admin for me to edit from Derek that I'll probably release tomorrow midday, I would guess, when I get that all taken care of and after the K-State KU coverage runs this course. I also know he's working on taking a look at class of 2020 op- 2021 options along the offensive line, continuing that series he's done throughout there. I've enjoyed reading that. We'll see a lot of that stuff on the site tomorrow. Of course, in conjunction, conjuncture, I don't know, they're similar words, uh, with the coverage we're going to have from Allen Fieldhouse tonight where K-State plays Kansas. Uh, if K-State happens to beat Kansas, we'll probably let that coverage dominate the site and show you a lot of them there for the next day or so, including, of course, the video highlights, post-game press covers all from Flando and Logan. The photos will get there now in Fieldhouse. Flando's report card. The final will be up tonight. Again, we'll have my analysis of the game, plus details from Fan, Nelson, and and one from Derek Young will be up tonight as well. So you'll see all that if K-State happens to lose tonight in Lawrence. We'll probably move pretty quickly into recruiting coverage for you all to read. A quick edition of KSO Today, today, here on January 21st, 2020, but I'll be back tomorrow with plenty to talk about as well as we look back at K-State's trip to Lawrence and our coverage from the Sunflower Showdown in Allen Fieldhouse. That's all I've got for today's edition of KSO Today. Hopefully you can enjoy your Tuesday. I'll be back tomorrow to break down the results of the Sunflower Showdown.